decision, brothers, we would like to begin the ongoing services for our beloved sisters, Mr. Sister Risa Boyd, uh, approximately 1130. We want to give the family an opportunity for a final reunion. So those of you who have a desire uh, to come and to view uh, the remains of this time, we ask you if you would be so. Now, at the 11.30 hour, the family have a final reunion and the casket will be closed. So we give that opportunity to you at this time. Thank you. 
Chupa. be gone even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. And to this family and to you who are present, this is our purpose this morning, and that is to comfort this family. As we begin this homegoing celebration of our sister, Sister Teresa Boyd, and this is a celebration yes. Yes, yes, uh, God has called one of his children home to be with him. Yes. Yes. We count it all joy because now she is free from pain, yes. free from agony, yes. she's free from worry. Yes. And guess what, y'all? No more death. 
No more sex. She's in the presence of the Lord. And so that's why we're celebrating. Yes, we're saved. Because we won't see her anymore on this side. But we know and we believe what the scripture teach. We ask him from the Bible. Is to be present with the Lord. We're going to begin this homegoing celebration and we ask that you would share with us those of you who can enable that you might stay in the family. Only if you wish, and we're going to just sing a little bit of blessed assurance. Jesus is mine, oh, the poor taste of glory to God. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let us stand those of you who can and will.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice right. and yeah. be glad in it. Hallelujah. I give honor to the to my Father, our God, the head of my life. I honor the pastor. Love you. God bless you. I'll be reading for you hearing Psalm 34. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes. And let us exalt his name together. Yeah. I sought the Lord, yeah. and he heard me, yeah. and delivered me from all oh. my fears. Yeah. They looked upon, the, upon him yeah. and were lightened, yeah. and their faces were not ashamed. Amen. This poor man cried, yeah. and the Lord heard him mm -hmm. and saved him out of all his troubles. Oh, yeah. The angel of the Lord encamped about them that feared him and delivered them. Yeah. But I like this part, it says, oh, taste oh, yeah. and see yeah. that the Lord is yeah. good. Yeah. Blessed yeah. is the man yeah. that yeah. trusted in him. Yeah. The word of the Lord is already blessed. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. I'll be reading from the King James Version, but whatever you have to be so on. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, that, that then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. O death, mm -hmm. where is thy sting? Yes. O grave, where is thy victory? Yes. The sting of death is sin, mm -hmm. and the strength of sin is the law. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor, and this is my favorite part, is not in the vein in the Lord. This is in the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's just a few more of your servants this morning. Yes. We'll stop by this morning to say thank you. Thank you. First of all, we'd like to thank you that you're God and you're God all by yourself. Amen. And even in this God, we realize that you don't make no mistakes. Mm -hmm. Oh God, we're here today to celebrate the life of Aunt Terry, Sister Terry, Big Sister, Little Sister Terry, um, friend, uh, church member. We're here to celebrate her life. Yes. And God, we thank you for allowing us to expend as much time as we did. Yes. God, we recognize that this is a little harder for some of us because, uh, because there's, there's some of us that would have given an arm for her to stay a little longer. She got some sisters that would have uh, uh, gave her arm to, uh, for her to stay a little longer. She got some brothers that would have fought the world yes. for her to stay a little longer. Yes. She got some nieces and nephews to, 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 to whatever they needed to do 
to keep us here. But God, you saw fit yeah. that this would be the hour uh, uh, that you would take her home to be with you. Oh God, and as I look, I realize that you took her in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a sickness, in the midst of all the things that are going wrong in the world. You decided that now was the time that you would take your daughter to give us some peace because God, now she don't need no medicine. God, now she don't need no doctors. She don't need nobody helping her. I believe she's going to be walking around heaven all day. Oh God, we celebrate this wonderful woman, this wonderful aunt, this wonderful sister for the struggles that she had to go through and she went through them, God. It wasn't necessarily easy, but she made it. Uh -huh. she oh God, 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 she made it, God. She, she, she made it. She, she was so strong in the family that when something was to jump off, God, she was right there, God. And then she fought for herself that she might maintain her, her, herself in her, in her own house for as long as she did. Right. Oh God, but now that she's gone, now that she's gone up there with the other family members, Rashad and, 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 and Uncle Tommy and, and uh, Uncle John and, and Cousin Robert, God, we, we, she's gone on up there. We ask that she would hold us a seat because we ain't but, uh, we're not, it's going to be not too long before we get there, God. Oh, God, but, but those of us who remain here, God, help us to live right now. That when we, we lay our head on a dying pillow, when you call our name for the last time, that you will look at us and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up here, and I'll make you rule over many. Oh, God, let this experience be the thing that compel those who don't know her and don't know you in the pardon of their sin, that they might shout, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Let this be the thing to bring the family together. Yeah. Let this be the thing, the arguments and the bickering that's gone on and amongst the family. Let this be the thing yeah. that bring us together. God, we love you. We love you. And yes. although we realize, God, we love Tyre, we realize that you love her most. Yeah. You love the Lord. Yeah. You brought her through storm after storm. Yeah. After trial every valley, you brought her over. God, we thank you for this day. We celebrate her. We are encouraged by her life, her legacy. Her sisters miss her. Her brothers miss her. Her nieces and nephews will miss her, God. But we realize that she's in a better place. So we celebrate you on this day, God. And we celebrate the legacy and the life of Terry Teresa. God, in the name of Jesus, if you would be so careful. We'll, never, we'll always give your name to praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
take this time to thank all of you for, for your consideration, keeping your mask on, keeping social distancing. God bless you that we can be safe even in this uh, environment. And we praise God for all of your, your compliances. Yeah. We are asking now that we will have words of tribute and remembrance uh, I want to first ask the minister more. He was so instrumental in sharing as he was the sponsor of our retreat, our Sandy Cole retreat, and Sister Teresa Boy had such a wonderful time when she went with us. And one him just to come and greet the family with words of remembrance and tribute. And then following Minister Harvey Moore, our chairman, uh, Deacon Waller, who with me on several occasions on Sydney Fair and visiting. And we will have reading of her life story and, and it will just be in part um, by uh, Nikki Powell. And she will also share with some cards. Then Miss Kendall will come after uh, Nikki. And then we will have a letter read from Terry's friend by Judge Watts. Judge Watts will also share uh, with, in a citation. Um, and then we will have a song of tribute after that. Amen? Amen. I know I said a lot in a little bit of time. I hope you all remember <laughs> Amen. Y'all got it? All right, come on. I'm the first one we put to the test. Yeah. Two minutes. Praise the Lord and give all honor praise the Lord to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I greet you in his name. I say to you, Dear Sister Carolyn and the rest of the family, may God continue to bless and watch over you in the days to come. Yes. And continue to bind together as a family. For the love of Jesus Christ will conquer all things. I just want to say a short little thing about Teresa. I hadn't known her long for came to the first Christian church maybe about five years ago, but I remember coming out of my house one day and I saw this young lady walking a little, little dog and she spoke to me with a nice pleasant voice and she had that soft spoken voice. And I greeted her and didn't think much of it at the time. A couple of days and weeks went by and what I noticed was Teresa belonged to the First Christian Church. She recognized me before I recognized her. And that's the kind of person that she was. That once she met you, she didn't really forget who you were. And she was always willing to speak to whoever she ran into. She was a lovely person. A god fearing person. And the, the scripture you have attributed to her, that she fought the good fight, Lord knows she did. The short time I know her, I know she went through a lot of things. And we had a small conversation off and on about our health. But I really gave praise to her, as the pastor said, we went on a retreat. Even though she was limited in her mobility, she was willing to participate yeah. in whatever we did. And she, was, she made sure that she had the opportunity to express her love to, to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and how she wanted to just take off of what a retreat can bring to you. And she expressed that in her testimony while we were at the retreat. So I give up a tribute to her. And I, as I said before, God bless the family and the future in the days to come. God bless you and have a smile upon you. Thank you. day that the Lord has made. We all should be glad and rejoice in it. We are rejoicing right now. Yeah. We are in this homegrown celebration. But I'm happy and I'm glad to be in the building, to be in the church. Yes, sir. I'm 
happy already. I came in the door this morning, yesterday. To be in the building. To be in the church. Where the word of God is going forth. To sympathize my believers. Hey Amen. I, I feel good. I really feel good. I know this is a celebration. But this is how I am in the house of the Lord. Amen. I had an opportunity on last night to meet with the family, meet with the brothers, to meet with the sisters on last uh, evening. But, uh, Sister Carolyn, and we had a wonderful time, man. She was, and your sister Teresa, she was a wonderful, meek, minded, uh, loving person. Yeah. She didn't talk a lot. You know, you had to look around, make sure she was in the building. <laughs> but that's how quiet she was. But she had a wonderful spirit. And the last time I saw like that, was there, when she was uh, sick in the hospital, of Sister Carolyn, we was there with you, we was there with Dr. Bob, we was there with all of our members. And the last time I saw her, I saw her with you, and I was driving by communion. And she was sitting over there with that smile on her face, and you know, she had the mask back. She was, I know her eyes, I see her eyes gleaming. And she had a wonderful, wonderful spirit. And so my heart was trapped, my heart was bleeding when we got the phone call a couple of days later, she went on to be with the Lord. But as it was said, no more suffering. No more heartaches, no more pain, no more doctor visits. The word of God said he's going away to prepare, to prepare a place for us. So we might be there with him also. So I just say to the family, just, you know, uh, be in church. Know that the Lord that we serve, the God we serve, he don't make no mistake. We don't always understand it. We understand it better by and by. So the route that, that she took, we are on our way. Absolutely. We are on our way. Mm -hmm. Nobody in this building is going to be left behind. We all are going that route. So work while it's day. So when night comes, no man can work. I enjoy it and I thank God that he, that he allowed us the board to be a part of this church. Be a part of this family. And I pray to God for, 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 for God for letting him be a part of your life. He said the life to with you all. I know there was a good time. I know there was a lot of good time. So cherish the memory that she left. Amen. So God bless you, Sister Carla. Uh, you know, I'm feeling what you're feeling. You know what I mean? Amen. Amen. Y'all just hang in there. Hang right in there. Amen. God bless December 23rd, 2001. Deacon Teresa Laverne Boyd transition from labor to reward, unexpectedly at her home in Baltimore, Maryland, from a heart attack. She was 60 years old. Two days before the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, the time was at hand in the Lord's final call for her amazing life of service. She was born on September 25, 1960, into a blended family consisting of her adult mother, Elsie Mae Young, by whom she was raised, 
her stepfather, John Young Sr., her father, Lexi Hopkins Sr., and Mary Hopkins. Her only child, Rashard Peter Taylor, her parents and grandparents have preceded her to heaven. Teresa was paid and baptized as the cornerstone church of Christ. She later joined the Shepherd Baptist Church under the leadership of Dr. Robert C. Hunt. In 1994, Teresa joined the Lamb of Life Baptist Church where her brother, Dr. Michael W. Hopkins, was the pastor. There she served as nurse and member of the praise and worship team. Teresa's commitment to Christ and her church was seen and in 2011. She was ordained as deacon to serve the body of Christ under Dr. Vanessa Booth. After graduation from Northwestern Senior High School, she embarked on a career in health care with the state of Maryland and worked as a nurse's assistant at Rosewood Spencer in Owens Mills and Clifton T. Perkins Hospital in Jessup, Maryland. Her experience in caring for the state of the served population group served Teresa well. She gave birth to her only child, Rashawn Stephen Taylor, on June 15, 1982. She loved Rashawn, and together with his father, Stephen Taylor, they always did their best to give him the world. It soon became obvious that Rashawn had inherited his mom's gift of humor and jest. It was known early that he held the same desire as his mother to serve the Lord and to effectuate change in the world he made. He was invaded with his grandmothers, Elsie, Pauline, and Priscilla. While working together at Rosewood, Teresa met Pete's mother, and they were soon married. For many years, they enjoyed a loving relationship, and Pete was a good and supportive stepfather to Richard. Although the marriage ended, their friendship remains forever. She suffered many health challenges. At the age of 29, she had her first heart attack. However, she did not allow her health setbacks to stop her thirst for advancement. After leaving Clifton to Perkins, she decided to pursue a career with the Maryland judicial system. She studied as a paralegal for two years. <coughs> Just prior to graduation, she was offered a volunteer position as a tenant advocate <coughs> in the Baltimore neighborhood. She helped residents of the city fight for equal and fair treatment under Maryland housing regulations. The experience she gained made it possible for her to secure the position of courtroom clerk at the Clarence Mitchell Courthouse in downtown Baltimore thereby fulfilling her dream of a lifetime. Exactly what if having a beautiful son, a happy marriage, a loving church home, friends galore, and a clear dream come true without a sweet little puppy who can share it all? Pop Pop, Coda, and Doggy, Callie were adopted and became the new front runners, front runners in her life forever. Teresa was so lively, animated, full of humor, and an utterly <coughs> unique character. Sometimes it felt like her irresistible smile had a soundtrack. She was going to say something insanely wild, and it was going to make people laugh. In fact, one of the most natural things to experience in her presence was laughter, perhaps little giggles, and most certainly laugh out loud jokes in the belly. She made no one laugh harder than Richard. Indeed, their relationship stands tall as one of the most beautiful love stories of our time. As Richard became more challenged, God embraced Teresa with sufficiency, abundance, and grace, which made her faith stronger, and she never made it. She enjoyed reading fiction written by African-American artists, dancing, Broadway shows, and travel. She envisioned vacations abroad and became disappointed when they could not happen. Instead, her family traveled the country for vacations and enjoyed desert mountains and coastal meccas, as well as the islands in the Caribbean. She loved the ocean, sunbathing, and all that jazz. On one adventure in particular, she was persuaded to try hot air ballooning with Ellen's family for one California visit. She found it to be quite an intriguing escapade. One of the most important trips she made was to New Orleans, Louisiana, in support of her work at the Aplastic Anemia and MDF International Foundation in 2008. She and Richard joined the last week local chapter after they were teachers' diagnosis of the disease in 2001. They traveled to Annapolis and Bethesda weekly to participate in support group sessions and events. Richard and his mother would coach and encourage persons newly diagnosed with the disease um, and help them cope with strategies with their prognosis. 
Despite the unrelentless responsibility of tending to her and Rashard's health challenges, she excelled in work and ministry and then turned her flair for style toward her beautiful home that well represented her with fine furnishings, distinctive works of art, and unique songs. Her style as nature was ever present as she always arrived on the scene so well put together with the nice fancy dress, perfectly matched jewels, hair whipped and dipped. Still, we all know the best part was always her smile. She kept her home vibrant and ready to receive guests. When it came to stepping out, she relished in being punctual and prepared and took very good care of herself until the end. She cooked and baked her favorite cuisines like chicken soup, beef stew, and candy yams. And to this day, a fresh slice of her apple pound cake lives as the best in town. After she stepped down from her role as deacon at the Lamb of Life Baptist Church, she found a new home at First Christian Community Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Alfonso Tucker. She served on the missionary committee and quickly became the apple of everyone's eye. She loves her church and will be remembered for standing on service with both hands raised and singing praise. She loved visiting the seniors at Seton Hall Nursing Home to minister and fellowship. She enjoyed crab feasts and shopping trips all along the eastern shore during the summer. On the Sunday before her passing, she took her final communion. Miss Teresa LeVarn Boyd and her son Richard will remain the zing in our story, the sparkle in our thoughts, the boldness in our prayers. Her life story will continue to inspire us and give us that mm, to live our best lives. Let us not be discouraged at this time, but rather let us seek to be encouraged by the life that she lived, the way that she loved, the way she kept her faith in trying times, the way she made us laugh, and the way she laughed with us. Cherishing her memory are her 10 sisters of Baltimore, Carolyn Laster, Ellen Samuel, Philip, Sharon Young, Chloe Young, Ross, Geneva Knox, Patricia Cornish, Christine Hopkins, Paul Ross, Melton, Shirley, Hallie, Penny Hopkins, Jones, and Calvin, Victoria Hopkins, three brothers, Michael Wayne Hopkins, Janet, Albert Hopkins, Joanne, Alexi Hopkins III, nieces, Nikki, Kendall, Tyrese, Shay, Crystal, Megan, Doreen, Tanika, Piedra, Lavar, Alicia, Portia, Nephew, Tyrell, and Fournette, Thomas, Stephanie, Sean, Chanae, Brandon, and Carla, Michael, Miguel, Lexi, the fourth, Marlo, Tremont, and Dominic. Teresa leaves behind devoted lifelong friends, Daryl Alexander, Alicia Ragland, Pete's mother, Myra Jennings, Stephen Taylor, Denise Williams, Linda Thomas, and the Honorable Judge Shirley Watts, her kind neighbors, Reverend Francella and Yolanda Johnson, Yolanda and Dion Tate, Rosa, Nancy, Joyce, and Cheryl. Can you hear me if I get close? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Kendall, another one of Aunt Sarah's nieces. She made me so happy, and she was so full of life and so joyful. And um, I'm just delighted to read the certificate of recognition, which was given to her from the office of the clerk for the circuit court of Baltimore City. It states, I'm Marilyn Bentley, clerk for the circuit court of Baltimore City, do recognize and commend Teresa Boyd, 
for her distinguished service and contribution to the state of Maryland and the Maryland judiciary. It is signed, Marilyn Bentley Clerk, Circuit Court of Baltimore City, dated January 8, 2021. I also have to read a letter which was prepared by her friend Shirley M. Watts, Judge, Court of Appeals, the Sixth Appellate Circuit, Baltimore City. To the family and friends of Teresa Boyd, I send my heartfelt condolences. My heart sank when I heard the news of Teresa's passing. I got to know Teresa as a member of the courthouse family for the Circuit Court of Baltimore City. Teresa was truly an extraordinary person. She cared about her work with the court and did an excellent job. Teresa was well thought of by everyone in the courthouse and a friend to all. I got to know Teresa better when I happened to run into her one day at the Cancer Treatment Center at Johns Hopkins Hospital. I was there helping my mother, and Teresa was helping her son, Michelle. We walked and talked, and we exchanged telephone numbers while we waited. I wish I could remember when it was that we saw each other there, but now it seems so long ago. I quickly discovered that Teresa may have appeared <coughs> small in stature, but she was tenacious and compassionate. I learned that she left no stone unturned in giving Rashad care and support. With the tender and devoted way she cared for Rashad. Teresa taught us how to be strong in the face of adversity. Teresa was an outstanding mother who had mastered the art of mothering. Wow. She was caring, supportive, and loving. She taught us what is really important in life is to love and care for those we love. Teresa and I shared many things that I will hold in my heart. She believed that there was always more in life to be thankful for than to complain about. And that's how she lived her life. Teresa knew the value of friendship and was a good friend. And I have many extremely fond memories of Teresa having lunch at the Doubletree Diner, walking her beloved dog, mm -hmm. Sally, and enjoying many long walks. And no matter what occurred, Teresa was optimistic. She seemed to always believe that things would get better. I take comfort in knowing that she is at peace. Teresa touched each and every one of us and left us with many memories to cherish. She will never be forgotten. The future sense of Judge Shirley and Amen. I think we can all do it well. Thank you.
so much love for God. Hallelujah. We're going to shout the victory. How we got over. Amen. That, that, that touched me, y'all. When it's all over, we're going to shout the victory. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, no. Yes, no. We thank all those persons who have come, and in a real sense, they eulogized Sister Teresa through the scripture reading, through the powerful prayer, Reverend Master, the wonderful words of tribute, reading of life stories, Sister Nikki, and Ms. Kendall and all of you who reminded us of this woman who touched so many. And persons are coming really, uh, you all did a wonderful job in, in my opinion and you and guys, but we're going to still have just a few persons to come and uh, to do the final tribute and way of eulogizing Sister Teresa. And those persons are listed in your worship guide. We're going to ask them to come in that order, as was asked by the family, Miss Althea, Alita, Reagan, her lifelong friend is going to come first. She to take the podium to my left, please. Of course, her sister, a faithful member of our church, sister, and, and uh, president of our missionary ministry, Sister Carolyn Laster, another one of her sisters, I've always had a joy in talking with Miss Chloe Scholar. I will come with a few uh, words following that, and then, of course, that brother, my friend, Pastor Michael Wayne Hopkins, will close us out, and he will also give the invitation to discipleship after he has had enough. Hello. Oh. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I thought I would be able to just speak. So I just put some things together. I love to hear it. Terry was a sister to me. As many of you may know, true friendships are few and far in between. Terry, whom I called Bree, was my best friend in the entire world. We laughed together, we prayed together, and we cried together. When I was hurting, she ministered to me and comforted me. She was a powerful praying woman and woman of God. She was a part of my family. They loved her like fame. Of the Lord. And I know you know that, but I say that because she emanated that. Mm -hmm. She was an amazing person who was kind, loving, and funny. Mm -hmm. Terry was a fighter, yeah. a warrior, 
And she fought for me. She prayed for me with every fiber of her being because she wanted to have the best for me. And I her. She was the best friend that anyone could ever ask for. Anyone. As I was reviewing pictures from our class book that, that I sent, I saw a picture of Terry from 1978. Mm -hmm. And I noticed around the picture there was writing. And I wrote about Terry, and those words were, my very best friend right. forever. Right. Mm -hmm. May you love the may you live the best life with the Lord with wisdom, right. love, uh -huh. and happiness yes. always. Yes. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? 45, 46 years later, uh -huh. and that, that would come to fruition. Yeah. I was 17 when I wrote those words. Right. And God blessed us with a lifelong friendship. Amen. And, and last I will say, I will miss Terry with all of my heart. My heart weeps. But I will have incredible memories to cherish because we had a wonderful friendship, a wonderful life together. Yeah. And I just thank the family for embracing me as Amen. part of her family. Amen. God bless you all. Yeah.
Terry set the bar mighty high. She set a high bar. All I can say is, hallelujah. Thank you. To God be the Lord. Chloe's gonna be on a live feed. It's gonna take a couple minutes for it to come up, a couple seconds for it to come up. Okay. But she's going to uh, be live. For, uh, Yeah. yeah, the people watching, she has to finish, uh, Caroline has to finish for the live stream, and then Chloe will pop up. Yeah, and this will be re-aired around 6 o'clock, and it will be available to download the whole thing in its entirety. Yeah. She's going on. Let's see, hold on. Yeah, she's going on. Down here. Okay. It died or something like that. Chloe said she's going to come in and, and do it too. Again.
Teresa Bloom, she had passed the exam and the interview for the corporate position. And she used her faith to compensate for the Okay, I'm glad she stopped. But let me know in my Okay. All right. When you see yourself come up on the screen, you'll come up in a minute. And. Go ahead, Chloe. Okay, um, thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor Tumner, Dr. Hopkins, Reverend Laster, and Minister Cornish. Uh, I'm so grateful to speak for a few minutes about my sister Teresa. We used to call her by the nickname Terry. Until uh, once she told me she didn't. She didn't like, did not like to be called Terry anymore because she said in the professional office where I work, everyone, even the judges, called me Teresa Blue. <laughs> so it was Teresa. Growing up, we were just a couple of years apart and we played. Stall babies, hopscotch, jump rope, tag, and etc. Teresa has her favorites, like mop and broom. She would look at me with those innocent eyes and ask, Can you play mop and broom with me? Again, she insisted on being the mop because, by her own account, I have long flowing hair, not like the mop. And you have hard, stiff hair like this one. <laughs> and she was at least partly right uh, because her, her, her locks were her, were her pride, and they were the prize as well. We would laugh and sing and dance, and she would poke fun at our boyfriends and perform little skits on different personalities that we knew. And when she graduated from Northwestern, Teresa went to New York for the summer. And she came home a sophisticated woman who seemed to know exactly what she wanted to get out of life. And she got busy right away chartering her path at the Rosewood Center. My mother and I watched Richard so Teresa could work nights and weekends. Teresa and I stayed close. And she looked up to me as her big sister and admired the fact that I worked as a legal secretary. She thought that was the coolest job working with people facing legal challenges. She would say, you get to work for lawyers and wear high heels every day, and I have to wear my uniform to take care of my patients. And I would say that it's much better to Terry at the time. It's much better to take care of patients than it is to attorneys. When she suffered her first heart attack at 29, I stayed with her, Pete and Richard, who was seven at the time. There was not much to do because Pete did everything. Um, he took care of Rashad and got him off to school, but I was there for support. Teresa was concerned about her health and she became discouraged. She wondered what was around the corner for her if she left Perkins and attempted to start over after 12 years in the health field. <coughs> My advice to her was something like this. Little sister, now's your time to wear high heels. You can go to work for lawyers like I do. And she looked at me, and she, oh, hello. 
Uh, she raised her head a little slightly from the bed and she said, I'm, I don't know legal stuff and I'm not a fast typist. I said, it's amazing what you can accomplish, Teresa, if you believe with your heart and trust with your faith. And I can stop here because Teresa believed she could pass the exam and the interview for the courtroom position. And she used her faith to compensate for the rest. She studied and volunteered so she could get to wear those high heel shoes. She resolved to work with lawyers. But through her faith, God elevated her to work with judges. She fought for tenant rights, and God elevated her to a homeowner. She worked humbly as a nurse's aide in the church, and God saw fit, and he saw her heart and her faith, and he elevated her deacon. She was all the meager for her many blessings, and now God has made her ruler over many. Praise the Lord. Again, to the family, we do honor God and for all that has been shared. We thank God for you for again sharing the life of Sister Teresa, who was just a jewel here at the First Christian Community Baptist Church. Yeah. And that's why we are one family this morning, her biological family, of course, and then her church family, who she both loved dearly. And we certainly love her. One thing I want to say about Sister Teresa is she, she, was, she was determined. She was determined to let her light shine. She was determined not to let anything take away her joy. I remember one occasion when we went to visit her, Deacon Waller was alluding to, and she was in kind of a ward. It was a, a secluded room. And uh, and she said to me she was going home, yeah. you know. And Sister Carolyn said, no, no, you got to stay here a couple of days. Mm -hmm. But while we were leaving, she was leaving with us. <laughs> yeah. And Sister Carolyn had a prayer and said, no, you, you can't, you can't, you can't leave, uh -huh. Teresa. But guess what? That was like the third day. Yeah. When I came and stood in this pulpit Sunday, <laughs> Sister Teresa, <laughs> was in the pew. I could not believe it. I, we had just prayed with her and for her. She was determined. And that determination paid off because now she's with the Lord. She was determined to see her Lord for herself. And I pray that you family have that same determination because there is only one way to heaven. And that is by way of Jesus Christ. God, there is no other path. There is no other ways. Good works won't get you there. Your good looks won't get you there. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And Sister Teresa knew that. She was preparing to meet the Lord. And Jesus is the only one who can conquer death, who has conquered death, hell, in the grave. Jesus alone is the only one who can offer you and I eternal life. And I want you to understand that eternal life don't just begin in the great by and by, but eternal life is a right now possession. As soon as you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's when eternal life begins. And it continues through the ex after the experience that we call death. So, so what I want you to understand is, is be encouraged because she died in the Lord. She was a believer. She was saved. And, and what that tells us is that she is merely moving to a new level of existence. And so when the body, amen, leaves this, when the spirit leaves the body, by definition, we did. But that's not the end of the story. 
because as they will tenderly place her body or her remains in the ground, the scripture teaches in Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, that the spirit returns immediately to the Lord who gave it. And then God himself, at the trump of the Lord, will unite the spirit with the body. But not the same body that you saw her walking in. Not, no, no, not, not the body that was affected, not the body that had to go through strokes, not the body that was frail, but a new body. The Bible tells us that Michael read it that when we take off this robe of incorruption, we're going we to put on a robe of incorruption. When we take off this robe of mortality, we're going to put on a robe of immortality. We're going to have a new body. And I'm looking for that day where I don't have to deal with sickness and pain. She knew for a fact that one day, thank you, Minister Darling, that she's going to see Jesus face to face. And I want to leave you with that scripture. It do not yet appear uh -huh. what we shall be. But we know, we don't doubt this, we know that when he shall appear, yes. we shall see him for ourselves yes. and we shall be just like him. Yes. So all I'm saying is when we all get to heaven yes. with a day of rejoicing, yes. that will be when we all see Jesus, yes. we will sing we give honor to the Lord on tonight mm -hmm. to um, not just pass the cup up but not my friend, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Tucker, mm -hmm. uh, he has taken care of my family for a long time. Not just to him, but to this wonderful church, First Christian. Uh, let me say this to you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You had taken care of us. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Amen. You had. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. I would be remiss if I did not mention Sister Marilyn Dorsey, whom I have known for years. We labored together. So I just wanted to just share that. In the sake of time, I prepared something, and I, you know, as much as Terry loved my preaching, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that uh, tonight. Uh, I bring you greetings from that, the, the church that is named after that wonderful place, the wonderful moment in time known as the now. So we, we bring you greetings from now church uh, we are just extremely grateful just give me just three or four minutes to get through some of the stuff that I wrote down Pastor Tucker scientists say that there is a phenomenon in outer space that is called a black hole. And prior to April of 2019, no one has ever actually seen a black hole. I mean that there were no, no telescopes that were capable of taking pictures, there were no images of a black hole prior to April 
2019. A black hole was just a theory, a mathematical equation, if you will, that was based solely upon formulas and physics, which proved its existence. They say, Sharon, that the gravitational pull of a black hole is so strong that it pulls everything and anything inside of it. Vicky, any and everything that is on the outside of a black hole is pulled on the inside because of the gravitational pull. Planets, moons, meteorites, stars, all are pulled or sunk, if you will, inside. They say that the gravitational pull of a black hole is so dense, so strong, that not only does it pull or suck everything inside of it, but once it is inside of it, nothing can escape out of it. They say that not even light itself is able to escape the blackness and the darkness of a black hole. They say that black holes are in space. However, I come this afternoon to declare All right, sir. that black holes exist not only in space, well, but they also exist mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. Tyrell, there are places in life, in, or in this terrain called life, yeah. where black holes exist. Places, Janet, that have a way of sucking everything out of you. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. They are places along this terrain called life that you and I are tasked to travel that life itself cannot escape. And the truth of the matter is that everyone, all of us, have been in them. Yes. Yeah. All of us have traveled along this terrain called life where we have been in a black hole. Yeah. Places, if you will, that suck the very wind out of you. So much so, Tyrell, that it makes it impossible to breathe. Places where it seems as if your heart stops and everything seems void, black, blank, and bleak. Life are filled with black holes. You don't have to believe me, but just live long enough. And sooner or later, you will find yourself in a black hole. Is there anybody out there that can help me say that this morning? That you have been in places where it seems as if nothing escaped it, something, places that has sucked and has pulled everything inside of you out. However, there are black holes. For me personally, today is one of them. Today is a black hole. For all my life, it has always been Terry and Michael. For all my life, there has always been Terry and Michael. Yes. Like peanut butter and jelly. That's right. Yeah. Ham and cheese, bacon and eggs. We were there. She has been 
with me through ups and downs, high mountains and low valleys. She has always been my hero and my true example of life and faith lived. And like everyone else, Terry experienced her fair share of black holes. She had her share of dark places. Like when her mother died and then Rashad died, a black hole. Like when she fought, suffered her first heart attack at just the age of 29 and after that, the many strokes she had to bear. And after each one, she seems to lose more and more of her abilities. Oh yes, Terry had her share yeah. of black holes. Places that appeared to suck the very life out of her. And yet, through it all, she never quit. She never gave her in. She never moved one inch from her faith and her desire to live life to its fullness. She was proud, so much so, Vicky, yes. that even as she walked dragging that leg and as she walked with yes. him, she denied the use of a cane. She had her share of black holes. But there is something else that I did not mention about black holes. There is something else that telescopes cannot verify. There are no pictures to prove the existence of these kind of black holes. They say that there is something else about a black hole. They say that if you ever go through a black hole, you will find that there is another dimension. They say, Janet, that on the other side of a black hole, there is another universe. Jesus. They say that on the other side of a black hole, is a portal to another solar system. They say that on the other side of a black hole, there are new galaxies and new stars. Yes, yes. They say, well, my brothers and sisters, I don't know about the other side of the black holes that are in space. Can I speak to those black holes? But what I can say is this, that there are other sides to the black holes in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is another side to the black hole that we must travel through yes. as we walk through the terrain of life. There is another side, yes. another dimension. Yes. And Terry has moved on through, oh, hallelujah through the black holes that she had to endure. She has gone on through the black hole to the other side. And they said that on the other side, the streets are paved with gold. They said that on the other side, hey, there are 12 gates to the city. They said that on the other side of these black holes, Hey, uh, the wind shall cease from trouble. And the weary yeah. shall find its rest. Sleep on, turn. Yeah. Celebrate to Jesus. Who's yeah. been faithful yeah. over two things.
request that there might be someone here who maybe you haven't met the person that Pastor Hoffman was just talking about who's able to bring you through on the other side of that black hole. You, you can't get there on your own strength. Two of the matter angels can't carry you there. There is only one who can take you from darkness into his marvelous light. And his name is Jesus. And so we offer him to you. I know it's a home going. I know it's a funeral. But y'all know we're living in the time of the time. Where this might be the last service that we've seen in a long time. We, we can't take this for granted. And if I were you, and if I wouldn't say that I have never openly confessed that Jesus is Lord, I will take advantage of this opportunity right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're not trying to embarrass anybody. Mm -hmm. We just want you saved. Yeah. Because all of us know now it's not a cliche when you say tomorrow isn't promised. Uh -huh. We know that's real. Yeah. We know even our gathering together right here, we can't take for granted. you make up your mind that you will make Jesus Lord. And what that means is that you are giving him permission to reign. Our problem is we want to rule and reign and still try to worship God. If you want to worship God, you got to let him rule. You have to rule your life, your thoughts, who you interact with, you're going and you're coming. You're here, you haven't accepted him. Why don't you just put up your hand? We're going to pray the prayer of salvation right where you are. God bless you, brother. God. Is there another? Thank you, Lord. Is there another? Thank you, Lord. Is there another? Thank you, Lord. Just repeat after me, just for the sake that we know that we'll be sure that everyone is saved, even those of you who are already saved. It's no, it's, it's, it won't hurt you just to say, ask the Lord to come into your life. Why don't you just say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. I'm asking you this day to come into my heart and rule, reign. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know today, my sins are forgiven, and I believe in faith that today, my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now let's give yourself a hand of praise to the brother. The brother who raised your hand in the back. If you want to get with Pastor Hopkins, get with myself, get with Tim. Give, give us your information and we want to give you and get you to a church that you can work out and live out your soul salvation. God bless you. You're saved today, brother. God bless you. God bless you. And at this time, you may take the seat just for a few moments. We're going to ask uh, that our wonderful Colonel Director, Mr. Eugene Walker, will come at this time that he might further give us instructions on how we should uh, be guided as we move forward towards the attack.
those of you who are journeying with us to the final resting place, we're going to ask that once you leave out of the sanctuary, that you go directly to your car and cut your bright lights on and funeral stickers will be given to you. While traveling in the funeral procession, we encourage each and every one of you to exercise caution. If other parties do not stop, you stop so that each and every one will arrive at the cemetery safely. We're going to ask that the few men that's here, if you would be so kind as to volunteer to be pallbearers to meet me in the north exit of the church, and if a few ladies will come forward to bear the flowers, remember we are still conducting social distancing, so if you be so kind as to come one at a time so that we can keep everyone safe. God bless you all, and thank you. Amen. And for those who are not traveling with us in the time that we ask that you would just stand that we might give you, that you might receive the blessing as we look to the Lord now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the all-wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever, let all God's children say, Amen. Amen.